हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम यू ऑल टू शून्य आई एस एंड वेलकम बैक टू टॉप फिफ्टी रैपिड करेंट अफेयर्स नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कंप्लीट द करेंट अफेयर्स फॉर द मंथ ऑफ अगस्त टॉप फिफ्टी टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम द सब्जेक्ट साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी स्टूडेंट्स हाउ द सब्जेक्ट क्लासिफिकेशन हैज बीन डन फ्रॉम वन टू फिफ्थ वी कवर द डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट हेड्स फ्रॉम वन मंथ एंड टॉप फिफ्टी टॉपिक्स विल बी कंप्लीटेड For on the first Feb, economic development; second February, polity governance and international relations; third February, environment; fourth February, science and technology; fifth February, reports, indices, defence, art and culture, and miscellaneous topics such as government schemes will be covered. Time is, you know, less. You have to revise current affairs, and you know, uh, there is current affairs crash course going on. that in which i have taken all the nuggets from the integrated current affairs batch in which the prelims ka mains preparation was there holistic coverage of two years of important current affairs along with the previous year questions uh, uh, is being discussed into it you can join that also and you can revise with the free initiative here with the important high yielding topics for the current affairs so let's start aditya l1 mission has been launched so missions to the sun not just by isro but by nasa also becomes very important one of the mission is punch mission aditya l1 mission l1 what does the l1 means upsc will go into the technology and ask what do you mean by langrange point how many langrange points does exist there are five langrange points l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 we are approaching aditya at l1 L1 is a place Lagrange point students is a place where the gravitational force the gravitational force depends on the mass and the distance between the two objects has is in equilibrium basically it is in equilibrium from the earth as well as the sun therefore you will find this L1 here just look at this L1 it forms a halo orbit insertion into L1 so here if into this orbit the equivalent force will be applied by the sun and equivalent force will be applied by the earth this is called a lagrange orbit got this point now some lagrange points are behind the sun as well l1 is between earth and sun this fact is important so what is the objective of this aditya l1 mission this aditya l1 mission basically the photosphere chromosphere and coronal ejections are there which are going to impact the atmosphere around the earth it is going to study all these chromosphere and photosphere of the sun and how it is impacting the corona the outer coronal layer of the sun will be studied by the aditya l1 mission i hope you understand okay uh, lagrange points are the positions in the space where the gravitational forces of the two body system like the sun and earth create pockets of gravitational equilibrium this gravitational equilibrium holds it into a halo an orbit okay so each planet with respect to sun has uh, five lagrange points in l2 what is there in l2 you will find the famous james webb telescope james webb space telescope so l2 there is james webb space telescope looking far back into the time why it is looking back into the time we have discussed that as well okay and langrange 1 aditya l1 mission now there is a specific kind of technology which is called as slingshot technology you can again look into the diagram over here okay this technology is energy efficient for our chandrayaan 3 also we use this technology called as slingshot technology here students this is earth and here you will find somewhere sun is there so at certain point the periodic sling shot by the name it is very clear if you will you know have a stone and it a sling is there with the stone at certain point if you increase the momentum then the velocity will increase similarly here into the parabolic orbit here velocity is increased so many times so that it follows this path and at certain point it will enter into lagrange orbit what this point this slingshot technology which vehicle is used we all understand gslv mk3 india is capable with the cryogenic engine technology but here for this mission it was not gslv but pslv xl that is being used okay pslv xl is being used to be launched by 
it uh, now it has been launched PSLV XL rocket from Satish Dhawan Sri Hari Kota it has been deployed in L1 first Indian space observation class solar mission so this statement may come in the examination you might be you know thinking twice that is it the first you know uh, Indian space based observation class solar mission yes it is the first okay so basics we have covered here Aditya L1 mission Draco program okay Draco program is demonstration rocket for agile cis lunar operations understanding this is this is led by basically darpa defense advanced research projects and analysis defense advanced research projects and analysis is an organization into united states of america usa usa okay so defense advanced research projects organization along with nasa this program is particularly for the uh, by darpa along with nasa the, uh, darpa has launched this program for lunar cis lunar means up to the moon only darpa launched this program up to the moon only which technology darpa is you know evolving here it is the fuel consumption will be done by nuclear fission okay seeks to demonstrate leap ahead of nuclear propulsion technology right now cryogenic engine we are using but they are uh, they want nuclear thermal propulsion technology nuclear thermal propulsion technology with nuclear technology you can travel very long distance into space this will be a booster for the manned mission into the deeper space in less time as well so once darpa defense analysis and research uh, project and uh, wing get success into this lunar mission for deploying moon tak agar hum is technology ko pahuncha lete hain then in with collaboration with nasa darpa will launch draco program okay uh, create a nuclear powered space propulsion system that could cut down the travel time to mars by half so that hum last mein leya karke mars tak bhi is time ko reduce karenge first we are trying it to the moon then to the mars will be there nuclear propulsion technology just you understand program objective to uh, demonstrate a high assay low crit uh, low enriched uranium and nuclear thermal uh, propulsion system above lower earth orbit in 2025 so upcoming this project is there important point is there generally we think in the examination if this point is given highly enriched uranium is required no it is low enriched uranium is required not highly enriched uranium okay less enriched form of uranium for its propulsion system is required launch of the test flight is currently scheduled for 2027 so this is the upcoming project next generation fuel for the space missions is going to be the nuclear uh, thermal propulsion systems this uh, may come as a match the column in the examination zrims mission and lupex mission zrims mission basically students between Na uh, japan agencies and nasa okay jaxa and nasa for x ray imaging and spectroscopy missions to observe x rays coming from the deeper space we can know about the galaxies the evolution of the uh, cosmos how it has happened so this mission is led by japan and nasa you can see here relate it with the space diplomacy also from the quad diplomacy uh, geopolitical diplomacy to space diplomacy japan and nasa here you will find that isro and japan identify the wavelengths with unprecedented precision detects x rays with energies ranging from 400 to 12000 electron volts and that will reveal certain informations of universe hottest regions largest structures and objects with the strongest gravity lunar polar exploration mission india has successfully launched on the south pole of the moon okay some controversies are there but yes it has launched we have launched on the south pole some degrees difference had been there okay lupex miss mission along with jaxa isro has planned in 2025 to study the moon rover it will use a rover and a lander to study the possibility of establishing a base on the moon that too polar exploration will be there at the poles the availability of water ice surface exploration and technologies in the going times so you understand lander india has demonstrated this capability okay lander rover and launcher will be provided by funded by 
Japan's agencies. Agniban. Okay. Now Agniban sorted. Basically, it should be like this. Agniban sorted. It is a rocket, students. Agniban sorted. Defense capabilities. How we are enhancing the defense capabilities and what new technology in the science and technology, what new technology we are demonstrating into it. Here, this is a rocket developed by Agnikul Cosmos based in the Chennai, basically a private industry. And speciality about this Agniban sorted suborbital technological demonstrator. Suborbital technological demonstrator rocket is that it is 3D printed. 3D printed technology, the question has been asked by the UPSC. Okay, into the defense also we are using 3D printed technologies. World's first 3D printed rocket, Agnikul Cosmos. World's, world's first 3D printed by Agnikul Cosmos Chennai, a private company. It is a customizable launch vehicle. Agniban sorted that could be launched in one or two stages that can be customized and what technology what engine it is using is Agnilet Agnilet not Agnilet but Agnilet it is also the engine is also 3d printed 6 kilo, kilo newton semi cryogenic engine that uses liquid oxygen kerosene and propellants so now the rocket manufacturing i have been talking about the indian space policy that talks about commercialization of space so commercialization of space is not just about acquiring some bandwidth or spectrum into the space but also about devising the um, basically uh, uh, devising different kinds of products manufacturing units uh, accumulating the vendors, getting the clearances, for that these kind of 3D printing technology will be of very much use. So in space, in space, NSIL and ISRO, now the ISRO's role will be limited towards cutting edge technologies in space and NSIL will be giving licenses, although the things have to be streamlined right now, they will be giving licenses to the private sectors. This is one good example. Sodium ion battery, lithium ion battery we know. Lithium ion battery. Recently, lithium has been taken out from the atomic minerals list so that it can the, the mining license can be given to the private players, not just the state players. Okay. Similarly, students, sodium ion battery. Okay, the ions of the lithium are basically replaced with sodium here. And for that matter, sodium is readily available. We do not need to mine the lithium also. And for that, we are working on the technology. If it is successful, then sodium ion batteries will be replacing the lithium ion batteries. So, sodium ion battery, lithium ions are replaced with sodium ions in the battery's cathode. And lithium salts are swapped for sodium salts in the electrolyte. Advantage, what advantage it would give? Readily available sodium, raw material, low cost, low temperature resistance and safer than the lithium batteries if leakages are there in the lithium batteries previously because it was into atomic minerals simple uh, basic it is net energy gain understand that when we are talking about net energy gain we are talking about nuclear fusion not fission nuclear fusion we are talking about nuclear fusion technology so, nuclear fission, we have demonstrated. Uh, nuclear plants are there uh, with Russia, with India, with US, with Japan, we know. Fusion technology, net energy gain, you need to understand this word, that for a reaction to happen, fusion of two fissile material has to happen, we need to provide certain energy beforehand. But once, because the fusion happens, if more energy is generated, then the net gain in energy is there. We have some energy we are providing. Utilizing that energy, two fissile material combine kar rahe. fusion is happening and then it is generating lot of heat, lot of energy and the fusion product. That is called as net gain in energy. Net gain in energy. Now students, for the second time net gain in energy has been demonstrated. At the global level, we are making Tokamak project that is happening in France. 
वहां पे बहुत सारी कंट्रीज कंबाइन होकर के आई है सम ऑफ देम आर सप्लाइंग सर्टेन फंड सम ऑफ देम आर हेल्पिंग विद द साइंटिस्ट सम ऑफ देम आर हेल्पिंग विद टेक्नोलॉजीज लाइक इंडिया इज हेल्पिंग विद क्रायो स्टार्ट इन टू इट ओके द ग्लोबली इट इज बींग परफॉर्म्ड द टोकम एक्ट प्रोजेक्ट इट इज क्रिटिकल फॉर कॉमर्शियल फ्यूजन ओके कॉमर्शियल फ्यूजन पावर इंप्लाइज द रिसर्चर्स कुड जनरेट मोर एनर्जी देन द न्यूक्लियर fusion process consumes in the beginning it is provided to it it can generate more energy over there so that commercially it can be harnessed if this uh, uh, technology gets the currency and it uh, gets involved into commercial production then the problem of you know energy diversification energy basket will be solved entirely india's role india is a part of the iter project it is called as international thermonuclear experimental reactor international thermonuclear experimental reactor project to demonstrate net energy gain from fusion reactors india has also constructed its indigenous tokamak it's called as aditya not aditya l1 ha huh, na this is uh, indigenous tokamak aditya and semi indigenous semi indigenous steady state superconducting tokamak ss1 we are call calling it okay <coughs> so basically here some energy has to be released net energy gain you understand the conception gene edited mustard okay gene editing gene edited mustard without inserting a gene understand the the uh, difficult part uh, in this gene edited mustard is in the gene editing for example bt cotton okay we we should understand that bt cotton bacillus thuringiensis cotton here a different gene from the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis bacteria has been inserted into the cotton correct therefore this is a transgenic crop a different gene has been inserted into the cotton bacterial gene has been inserted into the cotton it becomes a transgenic crop so gene editing helped in creating a transgenic crop dms 11 dhara mustard 11 okay genetically modified crop yet it has not got approval from the genetic engineering appraisal committee for the commercial productions still testings are happening bt got cotton one and only crop that has got the license for commercial cultivation across the country now students gene edited mustard it is there mustard has been edited genetically but it is not a transgenic crop no new gene has been inserted into it that you need to understand with the help of crispr cas technology okay crispr cas technology you understand it is like a molecular protein molecular scissor molecular tool to cut and uh, edit the dna okay so basically what happens mustard seed has a kind of pungency pungency because it contains gluco glucosinolates of 120 to 130 you know uh, ppm parts per million because of that certain uh, you know but uh, pungency is there into the taste canola is a specific type rape seed canola different types of varieties of mustards are there canola is specific variety of Um, mustard, which had its quantity into range of thirty parts per million, thirty ppm. So, what did we do? We wanted to reduce this pungency. But why this pungency is there into it? Basically, pungency helps uh, to safeguard it from the pests because pests find it difficult to, you know, deal with this one hundred twenty, hundred thirty ppm glucosinolates. Therefore, they do not consume it. now the pods outer covering are there after the editing after the gene editing what has happened the outer pods in ke mein jo this is the seed outer pods have um pungency of 120 to 130 ppm aur jo inner proper mustard seed hai wahan par 30 ppm parts per million glucosinolates are there therefore this gene editing without making a, it a transgenic crop produce the desired results therefore you understand you should understand this technology okay these compounds serve as natural defenders protecting the plant from pests and diseases therefore it is helpful that in the outer pod if the ppm is maintained parts per million is maintained then the defense mechanism will be intact for the mustard and if inside it is 30 ppm it is good for the consumption 
So India's most significant domestically grown oil seed is rapeseed mustard, not canola. In US, it is grown canola. Okay, this had been the genetic uh, mustard. Now let's understand the mustard scenario. India's most important winter crops. Sown between mid October, late November, self pollinating crop it is difficult to hybridize naturally as it cross pollinate. Naturally, we cross uh, hybridize. Nahi kar sakte. It is the largest edible oil yielding crop of India. Now you will say, sir, mustard se zyada seeds dusre consume ho hai. Palm oil bahut zyada consume ho hai. So, abhin oil consume ho hai. Highest oil yielding crop, not consuming crop. Oil yield. Uh, into the oil seed you have no, you have some parts of protein oil cells are there protein is there and then some amount of oil when you crush after cooking the oil is released from them and de-oiled cake is remaining so oil yield wise mustard has very good oil yield better than the soybean itself mustard uh, is grown up is leading into it uh, consumption if we see by the consumption Palm oil 45% consumption, then soybean oil 20%, mustard oil 10%, sunflower oil 9%, cotton seed 7%, groundnut 1%. Groundnut is very costly oil as well. Hmm? I hope you understand this. So, thank you guys. Let's meet tomorrow in another session of Top 50 Rapid Current Affairs.